Uh, and um, yeah, I'm very happy to present uh, some preliminary findings of the study um, on employers' role and uh, responsibility in the integration of refugees and migrants in the Nordic countries. Um, I was one of the uh, researchers working the study together with my colleague Rebecca Kavicha. We're both uh, foreign um, to Nordic countries. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if it means anything, but uh, just we have a different perspective too. Uh, and our own experiences. Um, but in this project, we focused on the uh, low skilled labor uh, migrants and specifically, or not labor migrants, but migrants and refugees in general, and uh, those who have low qualifications. And why do we need this project? Why, what do we want to learn and why is it important? Uh, well, as you all know, Nordic countries face very significant labor shortages across many sectors and different geographical areas. And, um, also, there is so-called labor market mismatch that uh, means that there are quite many unemployed job, job seekers as almost and almost as many vacancies available, but still uh, it's not easy to get it on going. And uh, according to different estimations uh, in Finland, for instance, there is a, a financial uh, annual financial burden for this mismatch is about six to 11 billion euros. And this affects both individuals and uh, society at large. Uh, and one, one of the explanations that uh, can be given here is that in the Nordic countries, we have very, very uh, few share of employees in elementary occupations. Um, in Norway and Sweden, it's about uh, 4%. So it's a bit higher in Iceland and Finland between uh, 6 and 7 and about 10% in, in Denmark. And... Uh, for these reasons and many other reasons, it's very important to have employers also on, be, to have them on board and, and uh, work with these issues. And that's um, why this project has been initiated. And one, um, the, we aim to provide uh, kind of a knowledge uh, on um, the perspective of employers on these issues. What are the key challenges they're facing? What are the hindrances they have for hiring refugees and migrants? Uh, what are the benefits they're seeing? What are the main motivations for, for working with uh, um, migrants and refugees? And uh, we also aim to provide recommendations on how the, the challenges can be overcome and, um, and how, to, how employers can enhance hiring refugees and migrants. And this, this project is ongoing with the results uh, and the results will be uh, published re relatively soon. Uh, and we have consulted different literature, uh, both great literature, such as reports, uh, service, and um, questionnaires among employers, um, and also public uh, different um, academic articles, um, peer-reviewed articles in the Nordic countries. Uh, we've also conducted in-depth interviews with the employers um, with the, both public and private, and um, also consulted different uh, intermediate organizations to hear what they have to say or what are their uh, understandings of these issues, what are their, um, how do they understand uh, what are the challenges that employers are facing and motivations they have. So <clears throat> uh, in the study, we uh, tried to uh, hear from a different kind of employers, both public and uh, private, both small and large companies, um, both ones located in urban areas and uh, more rural. And uh, yeah, here is a list of employers that I have been in touch with. Um, uh, McDonald's, Wisby, you will hear more about uh, them today. We have Region, region Gotland, uh, who, that is a public employer providing jobs in the healthcare sector, uh, care, care sector, um, both in urban areas and rural areas on the island of Gotland in Sweden. Uh, Scandic Pelagic is the fishing uh, processing in industry in the rural area of Denmark. Uh, Snellman, uh, you heard about uh, them today briefly in the introduction. Um, it's a, a sausage and uh, um, meat uh, producer in Finland, a large company. Uh, IKEA Finland and um, finally uh, Kronan Grocery Store is a chain of uh, supermarket stores in Iceland, located in both uh, urban and rural areas there. 
and uh, a public employer in Norway, uh, Andebu Care Home. Um, it's a small employer in rural areas in Norway. Um, so uh, I will share some findings from the literature review today with you, uh, and also some highlights from uh, from those interviews that we had with the uh, employers. Uh, so actually one of the findings that um, from our study has been that there is not so much research on the role of employers. So when it comes to integration theme and labor market integration, there's a lot of, a lot of focus on the uh, individual perspective, like the challenges and opportunities the individuals facing um, when they try to integrate in the labor market in the Nordic countries. But, but uh, this kind of perspective from employers is not very present. But still, we managed to um, collect some findings. And uh, uh, I would like to say a few words about uh, the benefits that employers see when it comes to um, um, hiring refugees and migrants. And the first uh, thing that uh, comes out uh, quite uh, a lot in the literature is the possibility to access a larger pool of labor. And this is specifically important for uh, um, sectors that have a shortage of labor. Um, then other benefits include uh, corporate social res responsibility, uh, possibilities for branding and um, uh, company image, and then also gaining cons consumer support. And uh, in a, a survey um, done by TENT, Partnership for Refugees, uh, this year, among the Swedish consumers, um, the, sur the, the survey showed that uh, consumers are more likely and more willing to buy uh, from companies that hire refugees or more actively working with supporting refugees and migrants. So there can be very specific gains uh, for uh, companies um, in this regard. Uh, and then there are a, 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 lo a lot of different uh, benefits that refer to diverse workforce. This can be boosting creativity, knowledge, innovation, and problem solving among the personnel with diverse, uh, di from diverse back backgrounds. And uh, w some other things that have been highlighted also in the uh, Finnish diversity barometer, um, which highlighted some benefits of diversity at Finnish workplaces. Additional to the, the benefits that I already mentioned have been also the uh, so improvement in customer service. Uh, and this is something that um, many employers believe or have a kind of understanding that um, more um, people with a migrant background background are more uh, service oriented and therefore perform better at this type of jobs, uh, which require cross customer relations. And uh, another important benefit has been uh, good work motivation. And this is something that can be spread to the ent entire working community. Uh, and um, these findings of the literature have been quite consistent and very much in line with uh, what we've seen when we interviewed the the, the employers. Uh, in our cases, the, all of the employers mentioned that you, uh, addressing labor shortages has been the the main um, motivation for them to to look into hiring refugees and migrants. In May, in some of the cases, they even said that um, this has been seen as the only possible solution to only viable solution um, to addressing labor shortages. Um, perhaps it also, also has to, to do some a little bit with the nature of jobs, uh, that the kind of entry level jobs are maybe not so, um, yeah, not so uh, appealing to to the local labor force. This has also been mentioned as a the reason for that. Um, and uh, also, what is very important too is that the employees that we've talked to mentioned that. Um, uh, migrants and uh, refugees also have the experience the same that they have a very good work motivation that they are hardworking and many of them um, um, yeah have lower turnover and uh, they've been really just very good employees and when we look at the barriers uh, we could see that they there are, are uh, quite many barriers that identified in the literature there's been a lot of discussion on the barriers more than on the benefits in general, and they could be addressed on different levels, uh, like structural, organizational, and individual level. Uh, when it comes to structural, this is about uh, the societal challenges, like how 
um, legislative and regulatory challenges that uh, employers can face in hiring refugees and migrants. Um, this also relate to factors such as difficulties in evaluation of uh, education and skills validation. Um, some some criticize um, organization of wage subsidies, um, uh, criticizing their insufficient flexibility, for instance. And then high minimum wa wages is also something that mentioned as a potential barrier for employers to hire refugees and migrants in Nordic context, as the um, um, yeah they're not proportional to the productivity level of some migrants uh, with low skills. Um, well, and at the organizational level, these challenges may um, address the, the the management of workforce and um, um, workforce and resources at the organization, and this could be related to uh, higher initial hiring costs and onboarding of uh, refugees and migrants. Uh, challenges related to cooperation with different actors. Uh, diversity and inclusion challenges. In this case, it could mean that uh, employers face some challenges when it comes to communication or um, communication or cultural clashes. Uh, but this this is something that also very much linked to uh, enabling environment uh, and the culture in the workplace uh, that fosters um, fosters this kind of. Uh, um, Diverse workplaces, so in, and intercultural sensitivity, uh, and lack of where whereof can be also a hindrance to result in challenges. Uh, and then there are also many factors at the individual level that make it difficult, uh, such as lack of language skills, insufficient professional skills, and cultural differences that have been mentioned as important barriers. And uh, we've seen also that discrimination is something that goes. Across this, across all different levels, and it's something that um, is present um, present pretty much um, in many workplaces. And this, uh, when it comes to findings from our interviews with the employers, um, we've seen that uh, lack of uh, language skills or limited language skills has has been identified as the the key challenge. But at the same time, it has not been a limiting factor to hiring refugees and migrants, as uh, it was emphasized by employers that uh, with the right approach and the right motivation of people, this, these challenges can be overcome. Um, and um, cultural differences and possibilities, um, the cultural clashes can also happen at the workplace. And the employers who, who we've been in talk to, who we've talked to, mentioned that yes we are aware of that and we we have tools and we we know how to deal with it it can happen in diverse environments and it's nothing that is very unusual but we can deal with that and um i would like to also highlight some findings or some teaser teasing a teaser findings from um the the cases the case studies we've made uh, when it comes to, for instance, the success factors, which we've seen have been very important in motivating, um, no, uh, success factors for um, uh, for successful hiring and integration in the workplace. Um, in in the cases that we've um, had in our study, uh, first of all, a positive attitude towards diversity among the leadership and manage management has been a key success factor, uh, and this means that. And with this attitude, it's possible to create a kind of inclusive environment and inclusive labor uh, working environment um, where uh, such qualities as patience and uh, cultural sensitivity are nurtured. Uh, another key factor to success uh, in the companies that we've talked to and employers we've talked to has been uh, a specific approach or some kind of philosophy that the companies or employers had. Um, and at the core of this philosophy has been this individual-centered uh, approach uh, where individual and the individual's qualities have been valued much more than um, the qualifications or background. Uh, and this is something that kind of, and they have also, be, also been committed to, committed to respectful treatment and equitable treatment of all employees, regardless of their background and um, um yeah, regardless of their um, origin. 
Um, language courses have been extremely important and both for for um, for um, like successfully professional successful professional development of the employees and for a successful integration in the um, in the society because language is something that is is crucial for integration and um it uh, is also facilitating to create create this kind of social bonds with, with the community and improve well-being of um of migrants and refugees and also increases the chances that they might choose to stay which also benefits the 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 company or employer and um and the community integration courses, uh, this, this set of measures have been targeting uh, to migrants and refugees to, to explain them what is the what is the Nordic labor market about, what are the norms you know, of the Nordic, what are the other Nordic norms such as gender equality, uh, to kind of introduce this uh, these values to and um, describe these values to the migrants and refugees as well. And cultural mediation is something that is very uh, much li linked to this positive attitude towards diversity, um, but uh, it is emphasized that it should go both ways. Uh, cultural mediation is something that um, facilitates and kind of facilitates developing better communication within the workforce. And it's important then to both understand the perspectives of migrants and refugees, but also um, for migrants and refugees to learn about um, the norms of organization and the society and uh, yeah, so kind of both way cultural mediation is has been very important. Um, and uh, a few more uh, enabling factors which we have seen uh, across the cases so far is that um, there has been um, um, a strong cooperation with the local authorities and the public employment services in in some cases, and spe especially in the uh, in the rural and uh, smaller smaller municipalities and uh, smaller companies uh, it has been specifically important and um, there there are also uh, employers also think that strengthening community engagement is very uh, crucial uh, on the one hand it also facilitates uh, employers to uh, to build uh, ties with the local community so that also migrants and refugees might uh, uh, stay there over a longer time uh, and also for migrants to and refugees to increase their well-being, and in this regard, uh, cooperation with the civil society organizations and um, volunteers has played a very important role. So integrating also um, civil society organizations and uh, volunteers in in this process may, uh, it has been uh, a success factor. And uh, several um, employers have also experienced uh, had good experiences with. Um, um, collaboration with staffing companies and civil society organizations that have provide, um, provided like they linked uh, employers uh, to specific migrants and refugees. Some of those staffing companies and uh, uh, civil society organizations specifically working with the uh, um, migrant workers and their role has been also important um, and uh, staffing companies can also facilitate administrative uh, burden for the company for the companies or can be specifically appealing for for those who um for those companies who have for instance temporarily temporarily labor needs or or work on the short term contracts and um staffing companies have also been seen as like as a safety pillows for some uh, employers who would like to test uh, hiring refugees or migrants but don't dare and are a bit afraid to to commit uh, to that, but with the engagement with the staffing companies, it's possible to um, to try it in a different way without like commitment to full time employment. Uh, and this this have been some of the uh, findings that I thought to to share with you for now. And um, you will definitely have another chance to hear more specific findings when the report is out. Um, and if you have some questions, you could ask them now or email. Uh, email them. Thank you.